Hi, my name is Conrad Coleman and we're here in the beautiful sunny Les Sables on the famous pontoon uh, where the Vendée Globe meets every four years. And we are now outside of that four year cycle. We are here for a race that's called the Vendée Arctique Les Sables that in a couple of days we'll leave here. We'll go up around Iceland. We'll all get very cold and we'll probably be very lumpy. And then we'll come back home uh, warm, safe and happy. Now, for many of the uh, English uh, audience who uh, hopefully will be following along in the race. Maybe you don't know all of these boats as well as I do. I, I tend to be a little bit of a, a walking encyclopedia and uh, I wanted to give you a, a dock tour, talk to you a little bit about the boats, their histories and some of the, the characters behind them. Um, now naturally I, I'm doing the race and I wanted to start off uh, with, uh, with my boat. This was initially launched in 2007 as Group Bell uh, which I thought was one of the coolest boats out there, it had a huge big cow on the main sail. I thought that was very funny. Um, it's a VPLB Verdier design, uh, the first of their collaboration. And, um, uh, and then it was Group L, and then Souffle du Nord, uh, skipped by uh, Thomas Rion in 2016. Uh, and then finally, uh, the first out of four attempts, Maxime Sorel finished the Vendée Globe uh, under these colors, black and green, with, um, uh, with VMB Mayenne. Um, and as you can see here, well, it's looking a little bit bare. Um, I, I bought this boat with a huge bank loan, which is really, really scaring me. I didn't sleep very well last night. Uh, and so I'm still looking for sponsors. So if you want to get behind a three-time uh, circumnavigating sailor um, who has some experience in media um, and can speak both uh, English and French, uh, then certainly please get in touch, I'm <laughs> really looking. Uh, anyway, moving on from that sad subject, we now have uh, Medallia here, skipped by uh, Pep here. This is um, a boat with a pretty prestigious legacy in the Vendée Globe because in 2016 it was put in the water as Banque Populaire and notably won that race, um, followed on by four years later in 2020. Um, it was skipped by Louis Berton and game third, so no pressure Pip, but uh, you're the third owner of the boat and it's never been off the podium. Um, <laughs> Here we have what the boat that is now Bank Populaire, um, which was initially put in the water in 2008 as DCNS. It didn't last very long in, in 2008 because it very quickly um, lost its rig and then uh, actually was used as a, a prop for a movie. I don't know if you saw the movie En Solitaire, um, but that was the boat behind it. Um, and then uh, most recently it was Apicil and then has been bought by uh, Tanguy Le Turquet, um, who is Clarisse Kremer's uh, boyfriend. Um, and so they're kind of keeping that project in the family a little bit. It's her sponsor, his boat, um, and then the idea is that he will do the, uh, the route to run with it at the end of the year. Moving on again to this, another boat of this generation. And this boat was initially Paprik Verbeck in 2008 um, and then um, went down to Barcelona for a bit of a bit of sun. It did several editions of the Barcelona World Race uh, and then is now back here under the, under the colors of Group Cetin um, and skippered by Manu Cousin and he has just um, done an enormous refit on this boat. Um, he, he told me that the other day he, he took on almost a ton of weight out of it uh, by changing the mast. He's gone to a wing mast. Um, they lightened the keel. They, they took a huge chunk of the boat, uh, the back of the boat out. Um, and uh, this is going to be one of my, my key competitors actually because my boat uh, is of the same generation but it has not been optimized in the same way. Uh, I'll just draw your attention because we've got um, uh, a good view here. We've got two um, little black things that are called Watton Sea at the back uh, and they are um, hydro generators. So they've got little propellers on the back and you can flip them down into the water and as we're charging along and uh, then it, that charges, uh, charges the batteries. Um, and so all of the boats do have diesel generators on board um, or with, with big fat alternators and that's primarily how the boats get their energy. Um, this is a bit of a subject for me because in 2016 uh, I did the Vendée Globe without burning any fossil fuels at all. And I'm a bit sad actually that um, there hasn't been much progress made on that front and that nobody else has really adopted that. Um, this boat here um, should be called um, uh, the, the Magic Boat as well because uh, it was initially put in the water under, um, under the colors of uh, Foncia and it won the Vendée Globe in 2008. Uh, and then it has won the Barcelona World Race um, 
uh, as well. And so it has an incredible legacy. This was the boat um, put together by and raced by uh, Jean Le Cam most recently and is now in the, in the colors of uh, Eric Bellion, uh, who, uh, like me, skipped the, the 2020 edition of the Vendée Globe, but did the one before in, tw in 2016. Uh, this boat here um, is, is an Owen Clark design and uh, you can see <clears throat> two rudders, two Watton Cs for charging the batteries, uh, but a very old style uh, open cockpit. And so Zabi, um, the Hungarian skipper on board, is probably going to get pretty wet and uncomfortable. Um, this is the boat that was initially put in the water uh, again in 2007 as um, uh, a viva for Di Cafari. Um, and then um, again has gone on to do several editions of the uh, Barcelona World Race as well. Um, this boat was initially Delta Door in 2007 and, and uh, was uh, Louis Berton's boat in, uh, in 2016 uh, and is now skipped by Seb Marseille. Uh, it's, it's one of the one of the far designs of, of that era, uh, quite conventional with, a, with one of the few boats here that's got a, um, a conventional rig with, um, with spreaders. Everybody else basically is on um, uh, deck spreaders with a single aero mast. Um, <clears throat> this boat here um, was uh, again put in the water in 2007 as BT. You can see a theme here, all of the daggerboard boats are on this side of the pontoon. Uh, skipped by Sebastian Joss then, um, and then in 2012 it was raced to a, uh, to a podium in third place by Alex Thompson with Under the Colors of Boss, um, and then in 2016 it was Kojiro, um, we'll see his new boat a little bit later on in the tour, um, and then uh, is now sailed by, um, uh, by a guy who is new to the, um, new to the Amoka world, and is known for sailing around the Americas and through the Northwest Passage with a chicken. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's it. There we go. Um, so no, keep, keep an eye out <laughs> for Goeik. He's going to be awesome. Um, this boat was um, is the one that I was thinking about. It should be called Phoenix because it came back from uh, from the ashes. This was uh, PRB in 2008. Um, now clearly in the colors of Fives Lantana and, uh, and raced by uh, Louis Duke, who was uh, an incredible competitor in, uh, in class 40 for many, many years. And this will be his first solo race in, uh, in class Imoka. Moving on to this boat here. This is the, uh, the most recent boat that was uh, designed around uh, Dagobord. So it's a 2012 generation boat. Crucially, it won the race in 2000, uh, won the Vendée Globe in 2012 under the colors of Massif with a certain François Gabard, the golden boy. Um, and um, Clarisse Cramer sailed that in the last edition of the race under the colors of Bank Populaire. Uh, and now it's sailed by Benjamin Farré, um, who recently did the mini transit. Um, and so he, like Clarisse, is also doing this massive jump up from a 6.5 meter boat to an 18.28 meter boat. Um, in a much tighter category as well. So he's got a big learning uh, curve ahead of him. And uh, thus far, he's doing pretty well. Although that boat is just so, so fast. It's one generation faster than my boat and I have to work so hard to keep attached to it. Uh, this is a boat that I know very, very well. It was put in the water in 2014 and I raced it with uh, the skipper and architect, Nando Offa, in the 2014-15 Barcelona World Race. Um, and in many ways, it was inspired by the newer boats that we've, uh, that we've seen previously. Um, built in Hungary, uh, it's pretty solid, pretty conventional with a, with a normal rig. And um, it's now being sailed by uh, Denis, the Belge, um, who I, I recently was on stage with him um, yesterday. And he told me that he, like most Belgians, takes a few beers with him at sea, uh, looking for a little bit of comfort out there. Um, here we have the, the oldest boat uh, in the fleet at the moment. It's a 2005, I guess, uh, boat. Owen Clark design, um, no, no chines, as you can see. So it's really um, a uh, sort of more conventional design showing its age a little bit, but in many ways makes the boat more graceful. Um, this one was built in uh, Canada 
for, by and for Derek Hatfield um, and was initially known as uh, Spirit of Canada and um, is now being sailed again by uh, a newcomer to the Mocha uh, circuit, Antoine Cornique, and we'll see what he get it, gets up to with it. Now if we go accelerated mode here. Okay, now we've finished with the daggerboard boats, we're into the foilers, and this is probably what you're most excited about, um, because these are the boats that generate the exciting images of boats both taken off and also <laughs> crashing down dramatically. Um, this boat is Charles, skipped by Jeremy Biot. It's a, it's a 20, uh, 20 generation boat. And like many of the other ones, you can see it's got um, rudders that, that uh, they kick up. So you can uh, bring up your windward rudder to reduce interference between the two rudders, uh, to reduce uh, drag, and, um, and then they have a fuse mechanism on them so that if the rudder that is in the water hits something significant, uh, it will kick up and the boat will probably wipe out, but the, the, the rudder should kick up before it self-destructs. <clears throat> so just to come and have a look at the, uh, the foils here, um, we'll look at some pretty dramatic ones, but this one here has multiple steps or a series of dihedral in them. In them. Um, and this is to kind of separate out the different functions that the, the, the foil needs to uh, keep the boat tracking straight, uh, much as the, as the dagger boards do on, on our older boats, uh, but then also lift it up in, uh, out of the water, which increases the rate and moment, uh, reduces the weighted surface area, so it makes the boat go faster and uh, adds, adds rate and moment. Also adds a lot of noise on board the boat. So for all of these foiling uh, boats that we're going to be seeing here, the, the skipper often wears a, um, an actively um, sound reducing uh, headset uh, with active noise cancelling um, because otherwise the, 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 the whistle coming from the foils is so loud and so high pitched they just can't get any sleep. Um, also look at the, the bow here, we're seeing some pretty creative uh, shaping in, in the bow sections. Um, certainly on Charles and, and also we'll see on another couple of boats. Basically they've, um, they've chopped off the bow and then put a, um, a, a motorboat shaped V uh, in there. Um, that prov provides a little bit more dynamic lift when the boat is plowing into waves and uh, stops the boat slowing down quite so much. Um, <clears throat> now this boat here is the, is the new one from Damien Seguin, uh, who is um, known for being a um, multiple time <clears throat> um, multiple time Paralympic uh, champion. And, uh, and world champion in the 2.4 meter class uh, because he was born without a hand. And so often we talk about single hand sailing, uh, he's the one that actually does it. Uh, that doesn't slow him down, he's incredibly fast, he's a spectacular sailor, even offshore on such a big and unwieldy boat. Um, and this actually is the boat that won the 2020 edition of the, the One Day Globe. Uh, so it's the current champion, and that is from a 2016 generation boat. This was initially put in the water as uh, Safran, um, for Morgan Le Gravier. Um, so now it's, uh, it's been proven to be reliable, it's been proven to be very quick, and it beat all of the new boats. <clears throat> uh, coming now to the, to the black beauty of the, um, of the fleet, we have um, 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 San Manuel design, and this was initially put in the water in 2020 or 2019 as um, L'Occitane, and so again it was all black, now it's Louis Bertin's uh, new boat after he, he got third in the last Vendée Globe. And you can see it's quite a different kind of shape and we'll particularly see that in the bow. Uh, but look at the setup that, the, that they're using for the, the Watton Sea hydro generator system. Um, so you can see it tucked in there just next to the, uh, the rudder that'll be, <coughs> that'll be there. <coughs> Sam Manuel came up with uh, a pretty different concept behind the um, behind the foils. You can see these uh, wild, tortured shapes here, and the very high position of the um, of the bearings. And so, <clears throat> normally the foils are uh, exiting the boat relatively low and then swooping up in a sort of graceful arc. Here they come out, and when they're fully retracted, they're completely out of the water. So this is a boat that shouldn't be too penalised when they're sailing in displacement mode. Uh, because they're not dragging those big foils around. But then equally look at the bow. This is about the first Imoka that was conceived around the idea of having a scow bow. Uh, and so there's lots and lots and lots of volume um, up forward. 
and uh, this boat has proven to be an absolute weapon in pretty much all conditions. Now, <clears throat> this is the boat that was um, put in the water in 2012 as the uh, sister ship um, to Massif. So this was initially Bank Populaire in 2012 um, with... No, I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's wrong. It is a 2012 generation boat. Um, but they put foils on it, and this was uh, Metricoque. So I started off with small foils, ended up with these big ones when, when it was Sam Davies' boat um, for Initiative Coeur. Um, and th this is the, the, the philosophy from Guillaume Verdier. He has a very low, <coughs> sorry, very low exit of the foil, and then a very long lifting surface, and then the, the sort of very sw swoopy, quite dramatically narrow tip on these foils. Pardon. But you see, très bien, merci. Um, so this is a new boat for uh, uh, Kali. As, <laughs> um, he's, he's well loved here in Les Abdelon because he's a local. And uh, crucially, he has done the last four editions of, uh, of the Vendée Globe. He did um, uh, 2012, 2000 and, uh, sorry, 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020, and then now he's back again, um, uh, absolutely rocking his new boat and loving it. Um, now we're turning to another one of the international competitors. Um, it is Prismian Group, skippered by Jean-Carlo Bedotti. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, he's wearing his, his flag uh, on both his rudders and also the, the aft sections of his boat. Giancarlo Pedro is the best skipper of the fleet. Ah, oh, the best, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Call Manon please. As well, as well, thank you. Uh, Giancarlo, tell me about your boat. Tell me? Tell me about your boat. Your, my boat, huh? yeah. my boat is a plan um, <coughs> Verdier VPLP yep. of uh, 2016. Yep. And uh, we buy it uh, in uh, 2018. Finally, we made the Van de Globe uh, in 2020. 20, and the big uh, change that we did uh, this year was change the bow. And now we have uh, a new bow, yep. different for uh, wind, of course. <laughs> Parfait, but très bien. Uh, merci, Giancarlo. Merci. So, um, so this is a boat that is in, in, in the middle of its evolution. Uh, Giancarlo talks about the new bow, so they, they chopped off the old one uh, about five meters back and rebuilt a new hull this winter and, and stuck it on, on the bow. And then he's, he's still got the, the original foils from when this boat was Paprik uh, Samichel. Uh, so that is going to be the next step of, of his evolution this winter. And so first they reinforce the structure, they change the bow to stop the boat pitch bowling um, and, and digging into each wave. Uh, and then the new foils will come. Um, this boat here, uh, you can see very similar generation of Verdier foils, um, is a PVA, uh, skippied, uh, skippered by Charlie Dallin, um who on ultimately did the, the shortest time in the Vendée Globe, but ultimately was not awarded the, uh, the win because there was a, a time correction um, for Yannick Vestervin, who deviated to try and pick up uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Escoffier when his boat uh, dramatically sank in the middle of the ocean. So um, th this boat uh, is sponsored by, um, by an offshoot of Massif. Uh, so um, it, it'll, it'll also run by um, Mare Concept, which is uh, Francois Gabal's uh, campaign. Um, uh, and again, is a 2020 edition um, of, from, the, from the drawing uh, book of uh, Guillaume Verdier. VPLP and Verdier now, previously they were working together for several generations, and then now they're apart, uh, competing both on the clients uh, and, on, and on the water. So this is a boat that is incredibly fast, incredibly well developed. Uh, in the last race, I was sitting at uh, 13 knots in um, on a reach going going pretty well in, in 12 knots of wind so I was going faster than the wind I was pretty happy with how things were going uh, until I looked at the AIS and I saw that Charlie was doing 23 knots in the same conditions that I was in so just between the different evolutions of the boats there's just there's no way to compete on some on some angles ultimately I, I finished quite well um, but the new boats are just in a league of their own um, this boat here was most recently 
uh, skippered by uh, Boris Herman in the 2020 edition of the Vendée Globe, and in 2016, it was Gitana Edmond de Rochild, um, skippered by Sebastien Joss. Um, and so uh, Boris put the same foils uh, on as um, Isa. So here we have uh, Isa Joshk. Um, she has the, a boat that is a sister ship to mine, exactly the same hull, um, only uh, they've, they've had more time to optimize the boat and really go looking for the last potential um, speed available. And so again, they've, uh, they've chopped and reprofiled the bow. Um, they've gone from a daggerboard boat uh, to a foiling boat. And when Boris saw these incredible foils, and designed by, by Verdier, I believe, on this boat, he said, hey, can I use those molds? And so he, he built new, new and bigger foils for his boat, um, which is now, <clears throat> well, he's got a new boat in build, but this is now uh, sailed by, um, by Roman Atanasio. Um, and then this black boat over here was, like most black boats, Hugo Boss. Uh, it is now, now sponsored by Hublot, the, the watch company, skippered by Alan Rora, the, um, I think he's still 12 years old. Anyway, he's super, super young. A uh, good friend of mine, uh, the, the Swiss sailor Alan Rora. Um, and this is the sort of pinnacle of the VPLP design philosophy. So previously we had um, the Verdier uh, school of thought. Now we have the VPLP school of thought. Um, you can see these, these crazy foils are a constant um, curvature and they are able to um, to be hoisted a long long way up and uh, that means that you can have less foil in the water uh, when it's really really light conditions but actually if we come to the back of this boat here um, you can see that uh, like most Amokas it's dramatically wide but actually on the uh, on the water line the boat is extremely narrow and so it has very little um, uh, right and moment that is created by the hull and in fact everything comes from the foil so this boat is pretty tippy and wild if you don't have the foils down um, this um, this boat is known for uh, for pushing the concept of the enclosed cockpit to the absolute extreme underneath these um, these padded panels here um, is the cockpit um, and so you you enter from uh, from the back you go through a little little hallway really and then you go inside the cockpit and you, you <laughs> he basically needs a periscope to look out and to see where he's going. Uh, most modern boats do, however, have a camera system up at the top of the rig. It's called Oscar. I don't know why. Oscar is out there looking, at, looking out for you. And that is a system that uses, um, uh, uses computer vision and, and an AI algorithm to go looking for objects out on the water. Uh, and it has two... Um, Normal, uh, normal cameras, and then it has a, an IR or an infrared camera so it can pick up objects um, at night. And it is always um, up there looking, looking for objects. And then you can set, um, set alarms um, and barrier zones. And so in many ways, between Oscar keeping watch for you, AIS looking out for big boats that are, that are also sending their positions, and of course radar, you've got three overlapping systems that are keeping watch for you even when you're in your bunk sleeping, which obviously is not something we get to do very often. Um, this boat here is obviously, well, is, is skippered by Thomas Orion, uh, sponsored by, um, <clears throat> uh, by Advents, but the project is, is given over to a charity called Linked Out. And um, again, it's a 2020 edition uh, Verdier design, uh, again, with the extremely um, high aspect ratio foils. Uh, that are very beautiful and graceful and uh, incredibly high performance as well. This boat won the last uh, Transact Jacques Vabre uh, and is one of the most highly developed boats on its third set of foils since it was put in the water in 2019. Um, again, you'll see a theme here, black boat, previously Hugo Boss. Um, this is the 2016 edition uh, from, that, uh, from that family, from that stable. And it was Alex that, that really um, started the whole idea of having the enclosed cockpit and only being able to sort of peek out the, <laughs> the, the edges to, um, to see where you're going. And so in many ways, um, this boat of the 2016 edition was the most highly developed uh, when it came to pushing the foil concept. Um, 
And crucially, his instructions to, um, to, the, to the architects, also uh, VPLP Verdier, uh, the last of their collaboration, um, was, I don't want this to be a boat that could work with daggerboards. I want it to be only a foil boat. And so the boat was narrower, lighter, um, and um, extremely optimized around the concept of foils. And um, had it not broken one of those foils in the 2016 Vendée Globe, the thought is that he would have won the Vendée Globe finally. Um, this boat here uh, was initially put in the water for an Italian sailor. Um, it didn't work out. Um, in 2016, it, it was sold and raced by um, a Dutch businessman, uh, and then has been um, has been picked up by Fabrice Amadeo. And then again, just this winter, there was a massive refit on uh, on this boat. Went from small conventional foils like we've seen on Medallia um, to to now uh, that he he picked up the first generation of the foils uh, used on ex Hugo Boss now Hublot, um, and so it has this um, these, these constant radius foils uh, that are that are extremely unique and extremely effective. Um, not particularly flexible in, in how they work though. Um, the boat is like Hublot, a pig upwind. Um, they really, really don't work in terms of um, providing um, the uh, anti-derive uh, concept of just making the boat go upwind, but very, very good for picking the boat up. And as soon as they're sort of uh, 70, 80 degrees off the wind, then it turns into an absolute weapon. Um, this boat here, um, skipped by Kojiro Shirashi, uh, the Japanese sailor in the, um, in the fleet, sponsored by DMG Mori, uh, is a direct sister ship to the other black boat, there are many, uh, that we saw previously of uh, Shawal. So it came out of the same moulds, it was sort of tuned up by the Shawal, by the Shawal team, um, a little bit for, for Kojiro. Um, it has the first generation foils, and um, all, all of the benefits of a modern 2020 uh, edition Emoka. So uh, enclosed cockpit, um, center of gravity and center of effort with the sails is uh, massively pulled back to help keep the bow up. And um, <clears throat> if you just have a, a quick squeeze inside, then um, lots and lots of ropes as well. Um, so that should give you a, a nice rundown of the fleet that is present here in the Vendée Arctique, Le Sable 2022. Uh, sorry you can't make it, but I hope this gave you a good uh, overview of the fleet, the characters involved, and uh, hopefully inspires you to follow the race when we get started in just a couple of days. Thanks very much.